Resident Evil Resistance. So this is the online component of Resident Evil 3 Remake. The appendix, created instead of the mercenary mode. The fifth wheel on my carriage. The annoying friend who came along with the girl you asked on a date to save her if you were an axe murderer. So my job today is to let you know if this game mode is any good. And there's a short answer for that. No. <laughs> Not in a million years. Not even when all the online games in the world uh, cease to exist after a solar flare and, uh, and uh, only the resistance would remain. There are some really fun parts uh, that keep you hooked for a long time. But let's dig in a bit uh, deeper, shall we? So the game begins with you choosing if you want to be the mastermind or a survivor. So you have six survivors you can choose from. Each one of them have some sort of weakness and special skill as well. Like this nice uh, looking emo chick can hack and disable cameras and so on. There will be four survivors chosen for each gameplay. The aim of their team is to coordinate and to work together together to advance through maze of traps and zombies. But there will be a fifth player on the other side who chose to be the mastermind. And this player's job is to make the life and escape of those players a living nightmare by summoning zombies and setting traps. But let's start with the mastermind. So in the beginning you can select your own special boss character, who you can control later on in the game. At first you only have this Annette Birkin, but as you level up you unlock others as well. Even Mr. X. But where is Nemesis? Sad. Very sad. What I love is that Mastermind has an accumulative level that grows as you play with no matter character from this Mastermind selection. After that you can set up the level, position the keys, random traps and some zombies. You can do this by choosing a preset. And thus the survivors never know exactly where the keys are hidden. You can also bring some equipment with you to turn the oven even hotter for those survivors, figuratively speaking of course. So the game begins and you as the master mind can use all the security cameras to spy on the women changing their under I, I mean stopping the survivors you are dealt with some action cards uh, that you can choose to use against them mostly you can summon different zombies dogs traps or you can just use your security camera as a gun uh, to shoot the survivors or boost your own zombies as you do damage you can even summon more of them you can also set explosive devices all over the map and choosing the location of everything is your freedom. And to be honest, this game mode is a lot of fun, especially even if you're slightly planning ahead, you always have an upper hand. Plus, you can also summon yourself as a boss character and take on players face to face. So let's now view the game from the eyes of the survivors. That is where the trouble really begins. First of all, all the characters have their own level system, meaning that if you play with one character, you need to level him or her up separately from the others. There's no main survivor level. And that is a slice of total wank. Because I, I only want to play with one or two favorite characters, but if you're not fast enough, others can snatch them right in front of your eyes and you need to choose another player or character. And I hate that. You even can't go back. You can't cancel the game. There's no button for that. In some cases I even switched off my console just to get back to the character selection screen. And this procedure can take up to 10 to 15 minutes. And yes, I'd rather take this option to be choosing a character I don't give two shits about. Plus I have no upgrades for this other dude and no unlocks. So if I finally, if I finally get back to my favorite player, it's, you're basically good to go. But don't forget this game mode is so popular that I sometimes wait over 10 minutes in queue to get in a game in the first place. And that's not really a queue, that's basically you waiting for someone to join the server. And this is supposed to be the high season of this game, the peak of Resident Evil Online. In the history of times to come, we will never see more people flocking into this, don't forget. It still is a release week, people are at home and I still need to wait 10 minutes. Come on, come on, come on. So finally, if you get into a game, you might have some good fun collecting credits, buying weapons from the crates, killing spawned zombies, walking into traps and all that good shit. But the game is broken, dogs do not work in this environment, they get stuck, they run instead in the furniture, they literally are inside the furniture and you will never hit them with a baseball bat unless they are really stuck in something. 
the game map is a linear maze. Now, I know that the purpose is for you to have no other option to run into traps, and I get it, but it's just stupid. Most of the time, you rely on other players as well as uh, when one of them decides that he or she will not come and stand on this platform with you, your score is ruined, your time will run out. The aim of survivors is uh, to find three keys or hack three terminals or destroy three abortion jars, that's what I call them, uh, to advance in the game. There are three stages to complete before you can escape. Every stage gets a bit tougher because of the time restraints and the mastermind will have more options. There are times when survivors can be trapped and if mistakes are made, their disadvantages become their final nail in the coffin. So the game is balanced improperly. As you play, you can also complete missions. Those are like daily tasks and weekly challenges, like uh, use 5 herbs in a single match or rank better than B in 5 games and so on. You gain money as you play or credits as they like to call them, both for completing tasks or playing the game itself. Those credits can be used to open get this loot boxes. Yeah, it seemed that it was intended for you to pay for those, but at the final moment they decided to take them out so the reviews would be a bit better. You can still open them with in-game credits. It's really grindy to open them all and legendary boxes take thousands of hours of real gameplay, but you will receive some good perks and items, they boost your stats and aid you in many ways. There's not much to be said because everything revolves around the same game loop that unfortunately left me a bit bored and disappointed. Mastermind on the other hand was fun and since the level gains make a difference in all the games to come, I think that I will continue to explore this mode, slightly, but not much. I give Resident Evil Resistance game mode a 5 out of 10 and I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, hit that like, smash that bell and if you dare, subscribe as well. I'm Silly Lamas and thanks for watching. Till next time!